in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We appreciate you for a day like this. We give you all the glory. Lord, as we go into the class this day, we ask that you grant us knowledge and understanding. Thank you, Jesus. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Once again, you are all welcome. Like I said, last week we treated democratic uh, democracy, that is, a democracy that is democratic in nature. And we looked at so many things last week. I hope you are all with me. David, you're welcome. Okay. So just like I said, last week we looked at capitalist democracy. And we said capitalist democracy is that democracy whereby the whole resources of the country, the decision-making processes of the country is in the hands of the electorate. We said it is the electorate that determines who and who occupies an office and what is the tenure of each occupant of an office. Those and many more were the things we looked at last week. Uh, I also gave an assignment. Unfortunately, it's only very few that did the assignment that I gave. And of course, you know, very soon, you'll be coming back to school. And because of that, those are the things that at least would help us in your preparation for your external exam. So please, anytime you are given an assignment, ensure that those assignments are done. Please on your videos. Omoye, Miberon, Joel, on your videos, please. On your videos. God bless you all. Okay, this morning, we'll be looking at a topic. Can you see the slide on the topic of the topic? Hello? Hello? Yes. Okay. I said the slide on the topic we have today is known as constituted authority. Constituted authority. And looking at that, we'll be looking at some contents. We'll be looking at the respect for constituted authority. We will look at the types of constituted authority and also what are the importance of constituted authority. Those are the things we're going to be looking at this morning. So please, I will need your maximum cooperation and attention. Mi Beron, Azeta Omoye, Joel, on your videos. On your videos. Okay. So let's begin without wasting of time. What is constituted authority? Constituted authority can be described as those who have control over us. That is constituted authority. It is described as those people that have control over us. Those who control the affairs of the society where we live. There are people that are responsible for the control of where we live, 
of the things that we do. Those people are referred to as constituted authority. They are those that also administer rules and regulation. They are those that enforces law and order. That is constituted authority. Everyone or group of person that are saddled with the responsibility of having the control over the affairs of the society are known as constituted authority. They enforce law and order. They determine our faith and belief. And they also teach us and train us to become better and rational human beings. That is constituted authority. So a group of persons that are responsible for ensuring that rules and regulations are obeyed, for ensuring that law and order are obeyed, determining our belief and faith, they are referred to as constituted authority. They are referred to as constituted authority. Okay, very quickly, let's move forward. Constituted authority can also mean lawful and constitutional powers derived from illegally binding instruments. That is, when we say constituted authority, it is not only those responsible. You can also get authority from constitutional powers, from the constitution, there are powers that you can have. That can also be seen as constituted authority. Constituted authority is also the legal power to govern a place, town, state, country, institution. So that power that you have, that power that you have in order to have control or govern a place is also known as constituted authority. For example, in our school now, there is somebody who is saddled with the power to govern and he's known as the principal. Are you getting what I'm saying now? So that is an authority. So the power to govern a place, a town, a country, an institution is known as constituted authority. Now, anyone that exercises legal and constitutional power is said to be exercising constituted authority. That is, the person that is in that office or in that seat that is given the power to govern is exercising constituted authority. What are the types of constituted authorities that we have? Now you need to know that positions of authority exercised by individuals or group can be classified in different forms and types. That is, there is forms of constituted authority and there is also types of constituted authority. So under the types, the types are further broken down into forms and majorly the types. So very quickly, let's see them. Number one form of constituted authority is called line of authority. 
It is called line of authority. Under those forms of authority, there is chains of command. That is the line of authority now. There is chain of command from the superior to the subordinate, from the top to the bottom. That is, authority in this form of authority means that the power or the authority comes from the top to the bottom. That is, orders are taken from the superior to the subordinate. For example, in a school setting, the principal is the head of the school and instructions emanate from him to the teachers. That is the example I was giving you earlier. And this is an example of what we call line of authority because it is a line. It's like a chain that is from the head down to the bottom. That is the kind of line of authority that we have. That is instructions emanate from the head down to the teacher. That is a line of authority. So it comes from the principal to the heads of department and also the teacher to the teachers and finally to the prefects. And from the prefect, it gets to the students. That is a line. That is a chain. So it is called a line of authority. There is also another form of constituted authority. It is known as staff authority. Staff authority. Under this, authority is given to individuals to supervise, advise, and contribute ideas, opinions, and suggestions but cannot make or take decision. What this means is that, for example, the principal calls for a meeting. And when he calls for that meeting, he gives the staff authority to contribute ideas and opinion. But that doesn't mean the decision or the ideas of the staff is overriding. No, but you can take or you can make, uh, you can contribute your ideas, you can contribute your opinions and also suggestions. Also, necessary recommendations are direct to the supervisors before final decisions could be taken. So staff authority here is talking about the situation whereby staff are given room or opportunity to make their contributions, their suggestions, and their ideas. That is one form of constituted authority. Then we have team authority. Team authority. Under this, Authority is vested on a committee to plan, to organize, and execute such plans with some measure of supervision. That is, under this kind of authority, a team comes together, a team plan, a team organize. And of course, in something that has to do with a team, is not one person. It's a group of people. And because it is a group of people, they are given that authority to plan, organize, and also execute with some measure of supervision. That is a team authority. And it is also constituted because that team 
is not carrying out that assignment on their own. A higher authority has given them an assignment, as it were. It is their responsibility to ensure that they carry out those assignments with a measure of supervision. Now, we have seen the forms of constituted authority. The three we have discussed now is called the forms of constituted authority. Now, let's go to types of constituted authority. Types of constituted authority. Number one is political authority. Political authority. Under political authority, it is acquired through the provision of the constitution and election. Political authority is gotten by the constitution and also by election. Such political leader secures the mandate of the electorate. Hence, power is conferred on them to lead. Now, under the political authority, what that means is that you can only get that authority if the electorate deems so fit. That is, it is the people that will give you that authority. It is the people that would say, okay, we are giving you this authority. So we are giving you this authority to do what? To lead us. Now, what are the examples of political authority? The president, the vice president, the governors, the deputy governor, the chairman of local government council, the legislative members at federal, state, or local, commissioners, ministers, all these are political authority. They are called political authority because it is only when the people say they want you that you are there. If the people say otherwise, then you will not be there. That is one type of constituted authority, political authority. Second type of constituted authority is traditional authority. Traditional authority. This is a kind of authority you get from the traditional rulers. The authority you get from the traditional chiefs, like the kings, the emirs, the obi, the oba, village heads. Those are the means by which we get traditional authority. That is, you get this authority through the custom and tradition of the land. They control, they maintain law and order, they uphold traditional institution, and they also serve as the custodian of customs, tradition, beliefs, and the culture of the people. That is what traditional authority do. They ensure that the, they maintain law and order, and also the custom, tradition of the people are maintained. They are maintained. That is how traditional authority is gotten. For example, an emir has traditional authority. Obi has traditional authority. And Oba also have traditional authority. We also have charismatic authority. Charismatic authority. Please do not forget that the topic for today's class is 
constituted authority. So please take note of that. Now let's go, let's go on. Charismatic authority. This is an authority associated with powerful, knowledgeable, and reputed personalities. Such a personality attracted the admiration of the masses and thus they exert great influence on them. They in turn surrender their allegiance to that individual. Examples of charismatic leaders include our forefathers, those that fought for our political independence. Example includes Dr. Nnam Diazikwe, Sabubakar Tafawa Balewa, Chief Obafemi Awolowo, Malam Aminu Kanu, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah, Nelson Mandela, and others. Now, all these are powerful men and women that have fought for the independence of their various country. For example, Martin Luther King is a charismatic leader and it can be regarded as someone that has a charismatic authority. Why? Because they were able to influence the people that are with them. They were able to influence their followers. And because of that, they are regarded or they have gotten charismatic authority. There's also what we have, coercive authority. Coercive authority. Isaac. Isaac. Yeah. What is the meaning of coercive? Huh? When you say coercive, what does it mean? Yeah. Huh? Isaac, just try. What do you understand as coercive? Obina. Obina, what is coercive? Obina, oh, I don't know, sir. you say? Obina, what is coercive? Okay, coercive means. So, like, when they. When they apply on, for us, uh, when like when you compel people through force okay okay that's Use very good force. okay that's very good very good all right so coercive authority is another type of authority for this type of authority it is backed up by the force of arms by the force of arms this is a power that is exercised by force and the people are forced to obey every command. Example of coercive authority are the armed forces, which is the army, the navy, the air force, and all those that enforce law and order. Also, police. Nigerian Security and Civil Defense Corps, the customs, the prisons, the Federal Road Safety Corps, the National Drug Enforcement Agency. All these are coercive authority. So that when we have people that will not want to obey the law and order, those people would arrest them. For example, if somebody steals, the police will arrest such a person. Are you getting what I'm saying now? If, for example, the Federal Road Safety Corps, if somebody does not have a license or the vehicle papers are not complete, 
the road safety would ensure that such a person is arrested, even if it means coercing the person. So that is coercive authority. Now, it doesn't mean that depending on the size of the person, no. For the fact that the individual is putting on that uniform is enough authority. That is why if you see an army officer, he doesn't look, have to look heavy. He doesn't have to have all the muscles. The fact that he's wearing that uniform is enough authority for that individual. So that is coercive authority. We have legal and rational authority. This type of power is derived from the law and only legally qualified individuals such as barristers, which are lawyers, can exercise such powers. For instance, only a qualified barrister can defend a client before a high court judge. Please on your videos. For everyone that is in this class, on your videos. Okay, so only qualified barristers can defend a client before a high court judge. So that is a legal authority. Positional authority. Positional authority. This is the power conferred on an individual by virtue of the position or office he or she occupies. For example, a person appointed to head a school automatically becomes the principal of that school. And because he is the head of the school, and that is his position, he is referred to as the principal. And based on that position, he commands some level of authority. He commands some level of authority. So it is those kind of authority that you get as a result of position. As a result of position. Is that clear? So that is positional authority. Now what is the importance of constituted authority? Or what are the importance of constituted authority? Number one, constituted authority gives direction on how government or institutions should be established and administered and also controls the affairs of the people. So the constituted authority ensures that the government and institution, the people are controlled in the direction which the government wants them to run. If the government says, this is how you should behave, because the, it is the president that is speaking, we would speak. If the president gives an instruction that the country should be locked down, the whole country must be locked down. So it is the constituted authority that gives direction on how government or institution should be established or administered. Number two, constituted authority enables leadership to define and assign roles to followership. Constituted authority helps the leaders to give the followers what and what to do. Instruction on what the people should do. Instruction on what the people should do. So constituted authority helps to assign roles to followers. Isaac, what is that you have in your background? Isaac, remove that thing I'm seeing in your background. I only want to see your face. Isaac, can you hear me? 
Yes, sir. Okay, that's in your background. I don't want to see it. Please remove it. Number three, constituted authority manages social conflicts. They help to eliminate violence in the society by enforcing law and order. Constituted authority, they manage conflict. For example, the army, if there is any conflict anywhere, the army goes there and ensures that there is peace. If there is any trouble in the society, the police also goes there to ensure that everywhere is calm. And that is why their primary responsibility or role is to enforce law and order and also ensure that there is security in the society. Also ensures that there is law and order and ensuring of security in the society. Number four, constituted authority guarantees peace and orderliness in the society due to the existence of established law. That is the constitution of the land. The constitution of the land. So constituted authorities ensure that there is peace and orderliness in the society. Like I told you earlier, the army, the, the, the civil defense, the road safety, the Navy, the Air Force, what they are concerned about is that there should be peace and orderliness in the society. Number five, constituted authority makes decisions and policies for effective and efficient administration of the society. One thing they do, for example, the president or the governor, the decisions and policies they make is for the effective administration of the society. That is what they do. When they make decisions, when they make policies, it is for the betterment of everyone in the society. What does constituted authority also helps to do? It holds beliefs, tradition, culture, and value system of the society. It upholds the beliefs, the traditions, the culture and value system of the society. Don't forget, one of the forms of constituted authority is traditional authority. And we said traditional authority ensures that the values, the beliefs, the tradition, the customs, are sustained. That is what they do. So when we have a traditional authority or a traditional constituted authority, the culture and tradition of the people is sustained and also maintained. Also, constituted authority helps to locate, it helps the citizens to locate their rights and duties in the society. And it enables them to know where and how to channel their grievances and demands. So before we continue, any question, please? Any question? Any question? Hello, I want response. Any question? Hello? Hi. No, sir, no, sir. I said, no, sir. any question? No sir. no, sir. OK, if there is no question, I want to ask my own question. Um, Miberon, what is constituted authority? 
Yes, what is constituted authority? Say that those who have control over us, they are okay. those who control of the society also. Okay, that's very good. Queen Om, Queen Om, on your video. Queen Om, Staff. how are you? I'm fine, thank you. You're welcome. Now, what are the types or what are the, what are the forms of constituted authorities that we have? The forms. Did you start this class? Sir, like, yes, sir. Okay, I'm listening. Sir, line of authority. Okay, can you briefly explain that? Con hmm? Yes. Sir, Go ahead. Sir, line of authority, that's like, is simply like a chain. Okay. That connects like from the top to the bottom. Okay. Like from principal to the student was oh. through different procedures. Oh, okay. Because the teachers and teachers are connected. That's good. That's very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Fure. Uh -huh. Fure. Fure. Fure, I know you can hear me. What is another form of another form of constituted authority? Yes. Fure, what's another form of constituted authority? Yes. What is another form of constituted authority? Okay. Fini. What is another form of constituted authority? Fini. Fini. Okay. Since you people don't want to, you don't want to, can you see the assignment? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Please take down this assignment and ruminate on them. Mm -hmm. Constituted authority guarantees Oh, can't see it. You can't see it. Yes, sir. Okay. Sir, we can't see it. Okay, just a minute. Just a minute. Can you see the assignment now? Hello? Can you see the assignment now? Eh? Yes. Sir. Amos, can you see the assignment? Yes, sir. Okay. Can you all see the assignment? Yes, sir. Okay. So? 
Um, constituted authority guarantees peace and orderliness in the society. Discuss. Please, all these assignments we are given to you. It is for your revision and your preparedness. Eh? I'm, I know we will all be in school very soon and we will need to sit down and discuss as expected. So please take note of this assignment and ensure that you do them. Any question? Any question, please? No, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yes, who is asking? That is Queen Om. Queen Om? Um, explain something. You told us that under types of, you told us that under types of constituted authority, that's when you gave us forms of constituted authority and types of constituted authority. Yes. So if they ask us in why to list types of constituted authority, what are we yes. supposed to list? Okay. You know, if you are given types, mention the types we have discussed. The political, are you getting it now? The traditional. Yes. But the forms is where you talk of the line authority, the traditional. Are you getting what I'm saying now? Hello? Yes. Uh -huh. So if it is forms, they will tell you, mention the forms. If it is the types, they will tell you. The first type I gave to you is just to put the form and the type together. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Okay. So the type is different, then the forms are also different. Please, I hope you are clear. Queen Om, yes, are you clear? Sir. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you very much once again. And have a nice day. Please keep preparing. Keep preparing. Your exams is very, very close. And I wish you all the best. God bless you all. Yes, sir. I'm blessed you too. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Okay, bye. Yes, thank you. All right, sir. All right, sir.